Have you ever had a hotel, resort, inn, or bed and breakfast guest standing in front of you, complaining, and you're not quite sure how to handle it? Let me share with you some tips you can use, along with some of the most common customer complaints. Welcome to another edition of Hospitality Property School. I am your instructor, Jerry McPherson. If you haven't subscribed yet, do it now and make sure to hit the little bell so you'll be informed when I upload a new video. You won't want to miss anything I designed especially for you. With the continued evolution of online hotel, resort, inn, and bed and breakfast review sites, social media, forums, and fuming customers on YouTube, a property's level of guest service is increasingly visible to the outside world. For this reason, it is vital that you have a working operations manual with the appropriate policies to handle customer complaints, as well as properly trained staff who not only welcome guest complaints, but actually encourage them. Unfortunately, many hospitality property employees believe the handling of complaints is an unlikable task, but one that comes with the job. With proper policies in place and training from day one on how to use these policies, employees can change their view of customer complaints. Employees and especially owners of independent hotels, resorts, inns, or bed and breakfasts should look at customer complaints as an opportunity. The worst complaints are the ones you do not hear. The majority of guests who are not happy with your property did not voice their opinion to the owner or the front desk, but instead told their friends, family, and colleagues and in more and more cases, went online to express their irritation. Yes, some customers do complain, thus offering you a chance to find a solution. But what about all those customers who do not say anything? This is where training should involve employees to look for unhappy customers and give them the opportunity to complain. Most people are not comfortable with the idea of being confrontational and would much prefer leaving a property, not saying anything, but never returning. So how can you get a customer, a guest, who is not happy with something tell you? Well, there are a couple of ways I've seen work. Have a specific email address on the bill, on the evaluation form, in the room's information packet, for complaints. For example, complaints at myproperty.com. I've also seen the same idea with a specific telephone number, a complaint hotline. The best way is to have employees who can read a guest. This is done with proper training. If the guest is in front of you, with training and practice, you can tell if that guest is unhappy by listening to their voice, watching their facial expressions or body language. If the guest is on the phone, listen to their tone of voice. Here you have an opportunity to be proactive and by asking the right questions, a guest might tell you their concerns. I've seen many cases where an employee might sense there's a problem but will purposely avoid asking for any feedback so as to avert confrontation. An employee with the right training and attitude will avoid any kind of confrontation by asking the right questions. Questions you should stay away from are the ones where one word answers can be given, like, how was your stay or did you have a good night? Instead, you want to ask questions that require more thought and response. For example, we're very interested in what you thought of our property. Or, is there anything we could have done to make your visit more enjoyable? Train your employees to look into your guest's eyes with sincerity and genuine interest in their response. When asking questions like these, employees are encouraging your guests to give more honest feedback and to maybe tell them about any problems. Being proactive and embracing complaints instead of ignoring them Hospitality properties have an opportunity to solve a complaint and turn an unhappy guest into a pleased guest, especially if they are happy with the way the complaint was resolved. You may be thinking, this might be a little easier said than done. You're right. Training your employees to invite negativity might seem like an uphill battle. So let's look at a couple of ways to applaud guest complaints. Have a bell or a buzzer ring in the back office when a complaint is received. Train everyone to feel that when that buzzer rings, there's an opportunity to turn a problem around. Track the complaints and measure monthly. 
Have the employees document the name of the guest, their room number, the complaint, the action taken, and whether the guest was happy with the outcome. As time goes on and problems are rectified, the number of complaints should decrease. These forms can be used as training tools, ways to handle better similar complaints in the future. Now let me share with you some tips employees can use, right after a word from our sponsors. Before the break, I said I would share with you some tips employees can use. The first one is a skill or trait every good employee should have. The ability to listen without speaking. Let the customer explain their complaint. Quite often, this venting will take the form of a detailed story. Maintain eye contact, demonstrating concern but remaining quiet. If you're taking the complaint on the phone, don't respond until the complaint is finished, but it's okay to interject with the occasional, all right, I see, and okay. When the guest is finished telling their story, show compassion and give an apology. Now the apology does not mean you're wrong, or is it an omission of guilt? It just means you understand the guest's displeasure. You could say, I understand how you must feel. I can imagine I might feel the same way given the circumstances. The words feel and imagine are powerful in these cases. Restate their complaint in a condensed version to show you understand the situation and provide validation for the guest. Mr. Richter, I understand your frustration. You're tired and hungry and room service is this slow? Again, it's okay to say I'm sorry. You might be surprised to hear that more often than not, guest service employees never offer an apology or worse, an insincere apology. When guests complain, they want results. In a perfect world, you could give them what they want, but we're in the real hospitality property world, and this is not always possible. A great way to handle guest complaints is to offer them two options. Being offered two options, they are given the opportunity to make a choice, which will feel empowering. Trained staff who are proactive can find unhappy guests uncover a problem and help properly resolve it can reduce the odds of further complaints and online rants. By being understanding and helpful, you can turn a disgruntled guest into a loyal patron who might be happy to share the news about your great customer service. Independent hotels, resorts, inns, and bed and breakfasts are in the business of customer satisfaction. As I said in an earlier chapter, the customer is not always right but it is your job to make them think they are. I don't feel that in the immediate future, all hospitality properties are going to be operated by robots. So for the foreseeable future, there's a good chance that human error will still be the source of problems at properties. It has been my experience that customers who complain can be categorized into different groups. Here are the five most common groups. The mild customer. They normally don't like to complain, but if you see there's a problem, you might be required to ask more precise questions to get them to tell you what is wrong. The pushy customer, blunt and not at all timid about telling you what's on their mind. With this type of customer, you're better off not being pushy back. Rather react with, what else may I help you with? Prove you're willing to listen to their problem. The big spender, your enterprise customer, they have no problem paying for convenience and top-notch service. However, they demand superior support. No customer cares for excuses, and this type of customer detests hearing them. Don't make excuses. Just tell them how you're going to take care of their problem. The habitual complainer. This customer will contact you a great deal, but that does not mean that their problems should be brushed aside. Here is where patience is called for. One thing is for sure, when this customer is satisfied, they'll have no problem telling others how great you are. The ripoff customer. This might sound a little harsh, but we've all seen them. This customer is never happy and is not actually looking for an acceptable reaction. They're just seeking to get something they don't deserve. Nothing is good enough unless they're getting a handout. The best thing you can do is to stay calm and react as objectively as you can. Now, I'm going to share with you the most common complaints, right after a word from our sponsors. Here are 18 of the most common complaints. 1. 
Noisy neighbors. No matter what type of property you're running, you'll eventually have to deal with guests complaining about noisy neighbors. Your guests pay good money to stay at your property and getting some peace and quiet shouldn't be too much to ask. It's the bare minimum of what's expected. Politely ask their neighbors to please keep the volume down because it's bothering the other guests. Keep in mind the noisy neighbors are still guests at your property and should be treated with the appropriate respect. 2. Hot water and plumbing glitches. There are a number of things that can go wrong here. First is the amount or lack of hot water. This is a common issue that property guests have, but it's your job to ensure that there is enough hot water for all your guests. Next is the plumbing in general, smells and mold. If the issue isn't able to be fixed, make sure to move them to a new room or consider calling in a plumber. For any smells or mold, make sure it's immediately addressed by having a cleaning crew go to their room and scrub it clean. 3. Beds too small, soft, hard. It's a personal thing and you won't be able to please everyone all the time. Make sure you purchase your beds from a supplier that understands the hospitality property industry. Is this making sense? Let me know by leaving a comment. 4. Unclean rooms. Mistakes happen, so don't spend too much time fretting over it. Apologize, correct the issue, and develop a checklist to make sure nothing is messed when turning over a room. 5. Room temperature. I wish there was a one fix solution for this, but there isn't. In much of North America, air conditioning is expected. In Europe and other parts of the world, if a property has air conditioning, it is often turned off when a guest is not in the room. The reason for this is the cost of energy. And even when on full blast, it's not going to get super cool. You can apologize, but inform your guests that this is the norm. 6. No free Wi-Fi. People are so used to free Wi-Fi nowadays that whenever they're in a place that doesn't have it, they tend to get frustrated. Simple answer, supply Wi-Fi. 7. Food problems. When the food comes up short, it only makes sense that customers will complain. Bring all food complaints straight to the kitchen staff, as well as the wait staff that are responsible for delivering the food. If breakfast is included in room rate, the fact still remains that your guests expect a high quality meal to start their day. Many properties make the mistake of skipping on the quality just to save, which leads to low quality meals that your guests are going to remember the next time they want to book. Make sure to go above and beyond when it comes to your breakfast. 8. It doesn't match the website or brochure. Don't exaggerate on your website or brochures. If your guests are expecting 5 star accommodations and you're only offering 3 star, you're going to have unhappy customers. If your property is not perfect, relax. In fact, few properties are perfect. Just make sure you share all the exact details of your property in your description. If your property description is not the issue, then dig in a little deeper. You might find that they are really just mad because it's raining outside when they expect it bright blue skies. Stay professional about the situation, saying sorry even when a sorry isn't needed. Is this making sense? Let me know in the comments. 9. Extra Charges Hospitality property stays can be expensive for many people and customers are not going to be happy having to pay more than what they previously had in mind. Be upfront and clear with any possible charges, leaving no surprises. Properties that do engage in hidden charges can expect to face plenty of negative reviews. 10. Employee Issues We can all have a bad day, and no matter how well operated your property is, there will be times when issues arise between customers and staff. These problems can range from complaints regarding their attitude, not feeling like they're doing everything they can, etc. This is a tricky area to maneuver because you don't want to make the mistake of alienating your employees in effort to please the customer, but you also want the customer to feel like their concerns are being heard. Listen intently to the customer complaints while apologizing on behalf of the business and working to come to a resolution that you both can agree on. 
While this may lead to you having to offer free amenities on behalf of your property, it's still better than having the customer flood review sites with negative comments. 11. Ignoring the Do Not Disturb sign. A Do Not Disturb sign is sacred. Your guests paid for the right to feel at home, and a big part of achieving that is having your staff respect their Do Not Disturb sign whenever it is presented. Ensure each room comes equipped with one and that your staff respect the sign. 12. Not honoring reservations. There are times when properties overbook their rooms in an effort to maximize profits. This may be a profitable practice, but what happens if all your guests show? To no surprise, this can cause guests to be furious and demand an explanation as to why their rooms aren't available. If you find yourself in this situation, it's best to put them up in a nearby property and pay for an upgrade plus meals or drinks. 13. Theft. This can be a very serious issue and shouldn't be taken lightly, and you should have a policy in place to handle the situation. If you don't have procedures in place, then create one immediately. If this matter isn't handled properly, it can evolve into something much bigger if left unchecked, and there's always a possibility of a lawsuit. Practice due diligence to ensure your property is protected. 14. No pets. Certain guests are always going to have issues with rules that are explicitly stated on your website and brochures. But that doesn't change the fact that they're your guests and still deserve the utmost respect. If a guest shows up with a pet to your property when you have strict no pet policies, then be sure to explain your rules regarding the subject and suggest nearby properties that are pet friendly. 15. Lack of complimentary amenities. By complimentary amenities, I mean things like shampoo, soap, hangers, etc. While you may be concerned with theft, it's important to note that not having these available to your guests won't score you any points and will put a damper on your brand. 16. Not available. One of the easiest ways to impress your guests is just by being available, especially in small properties. Guests want to know what they can expect and things like the check-in and check-out times are clear. If you are unable to welcome them in person, communicate this to them and double check that they know the check-in procedure. 17. Lack of useful information. New guests arriving at a property might not have any idea of what to see, where to eat, how to make a call, how to use the TV. Create an information package that includes all useful information a person new to the area would need. Very few independent properties offer this and it's too bad because they are hugely appreciated. 18. Lack of appropriate outlets. More and more of us are traveling with phones, tablets, cameras, and require them to be charged. Walking into a room only to find one or two outlets hidden behind the bed or end tables is no longer acceptable. This requirement is not going to change in the near future, so ensure you have plenty of outlets available and accessible. In conclusion, running a hospitality property can be difficult for a variety of reasons. There are a ton of moving parts, and no matter how hard you work, it seems like there's always going to be a customer complaining about something. Ensure you and your staff are adequately prepared to deal with the common complaints and that these are documented in your operations manual. Make sure to update it as any new issues arise. If you have come across customer complaints that I have not covered, I would like to see them. Leave them in the comments. You will have access to this post for six weeks before it gets locked in the vault for Hospitality Property School Group members only. When you see that we have something new, don't mark it as unread or file it away in the belief you'll be able to read it later because you might miss your chance. To see all the other valuable material you would have access to as a member of the Hospitality Property School Group, check out the short video in the episode post show notes. In the next episode, I'll be talking about great guests' experiences. Well, that's it for today's episode. Until next time, have a fun day. Oh, P.S. Have you signed up for your insider tips? You can find the link in the show notes.